Hello, welcome to week nine of your Pharmacy Procedures 2 course. Uh, we're going to be covering two chapters this week, chapter 22 and 23, both of which deal with pediatric patients and the calculations for their medications. Um, but before we get into the topics, um, I just wanted to give you a few reminders. This course does end next week, and it always will end on a Thursday of week 10. So everything must be completed by next week, Thursday. So make sure that you're getting anything that you might be missing turned in as soon as possible. You may still turn in assignments and tests. The only thing that you cannot turn in is your discussion posts. So anything that's missing from previous weeks, you may still complete and get turned in. If you have any questions about that or problems accessing something, please make sure you reach out to me and let me know. Uh, we want to make sure that you complete the courses as successfully as possible. Um, now on to this week's material. We are covering two chapters, as I said, um, and what we're going to be looking at is pediatric patients and the medications and calculations for them. Um, when we talk about calculating for a pediatric patient, most of the time their oral medications are going to be a liquid form. Uh, it, you know, it kind of makes sense if you think about it, most small children are not going to be able to swallow tablets, capsules, that kinds of things. So the, the dosages are usually smaller than those for adults and we're going to usually base them off of a child's weight in kilograms. So a lot of times they'll give you a dose range um, so we'll want to make sure that we're following the label directions but we'll always need to change that patient's weight to kilograms if that's the way the dosages are mentioned on the actual label of the medication. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you know, obviously liquids are a lot easier to swallow for children. Um, they also have more rapid absorption rates. Um, we will be typically using um, oral syringes for liquid medications. Um, which is basically like a, a, a it's just a, a needleless syringe. Um, and then also droppers for even smaller children, the infants. Um, they have more of a, um, a smaller calibration on them. So we're able to use those um, to, to kind of be more precise with the, it, with the, uh, the medication and the measurement of that medication. Um, we have a, a, a few different types of, uh, of liquids. Um, some things might be um, considered suspensions if we have a drug that's what we consider insoluble. So it's it's typically a thicker um, consistency and you can sometimes see those particles kind of hanging in the liquid. That's how you know you've got a suspension. You've got to be very careful with those to so make sure you mix them thoroughly um, and you have to uh, administer them right away or else everything settles out. Um, a good example of this would be um, amoxicillin. If you've ever picked up the pink stuff um, at the pharmacy for your child or um, another person's, um, you know, youngster, you will have seen the, the bubblegum flavored medication and it comes in powder. You add a liquid, distilled water, you shake it um, and it becomes a suspension. So those, those particles don't actually completely dissolve in there. They're kind of hanging in the water. So you'll want to make sure that every time you get ready to give that medication, you shake it well. Um, some of the things that they also talk about in this chapter are tablets and capsules. Um, when you are giving a tablet or a capsule, you have to make sure that the child actually swallows it. Um, I know it probably sounds um, kind of, you know, common sense, but, you know, a lot of times kids have trouble swallowing tablets and capsules, which is why we do liquids. Um, so we want to make sure that they actually swallow it. But we do have chewable tablets, so that does help. Um, we can crush some tablets and, and add them to things like applesauce or juice or something like that. But you have to make sure that you read the labels carefully because not all tablets can be crushed. So it's very important that we, um, we check that, especially if they're enteric coated or time released. Um, you can't crush them because it, it, it destroys that that characteristic of that particular medication. Now the other medications that we're going to be talking about are uh, parenteral medications. Um, parenteral medications is basically anything that's not going by mouth. Um, so that could be something that is subcutaneous like insulin 
Uh, it could be something that's intramuscular, like immunizations. Um, and then in the next chapter, it will cover actual intravenous medications. Um, so if you have any problems or questions as you're going through this week's material, please make sure you reach out to me. Again, make sure you have everything turned in by next week, Thursday, and uh, let me know how I can help you. Have a great week.